Hey, welcome back, everybody. I'm just filming the fourth video here. Uh, just putting together something kind of quickly and roughly for an idea that I've just been mulling over a lot this week. And uh, it kind of touches on some things I've said before as far as maybe information and how it's sorted and stored. Uh, but for this, um, kind of the thought that struck me was um, I'm always fascinated by entropy. And while I probably don't have the most scientific um, definition of it maybe, or my approach to it is very uh, personal, I guess. Um, it in some ways has a lot of ties with, uh, to me or yeah, it has a lot of ties to AI and information in ways that I see it. So um, kind of when you think about entropy and like the laws of thermodyna thermodynamics, um, you get basically that in a closed system, everything tends to uh, devolve into uh, a less ordered state. Um, usually this applies to energy um, or matter. Um, there's obviously, I mean, I, I tend to correlate uh, information with energy and matter. I know there's some debate over that and whatnot, but um, I think it's pretty clear that there is there is some sort of guiding principles or information uh Integrally, integrally linked with um, matter and energy. So um, finding those patterns, uh, I think, can really be tied together with the laws of entropy where, again, in a closed system, if you're not receiving new information, new energy, new matter, um, you're just going to become more disorganized. So kind of using that as the diving off point, looking at large language models and AI models, um, they're all pulling from data. And so I kind of have drawn this correlation where, you know, you have the model itself, which is kind of a closed system in some sense. And because um, basically that over time you can actually, people are adding new system or information into the system just uh, at an increasing rate, you know, with, different types of data, um, you know, just constantly, you know, the way to, the idea now to fix these models or to make them better is just to add more data or clearer data or, um, you know, basically just increasing the quantity of information to increase the capacity. And so when you're doing this, you're, you're taking this in some sense closed system of like an algorithm or um, a program and you're ultimately just dumping um, information into it, which kind of, you know, in this analogy would kind of refresh the system or, you know, keep it running with meaningful results on the other end. Um, and so the system can keep producing things that are coherent to at least people, um, in some sense, because we keep getting, you know, new data to, 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 um, output. And so all this stuff that's being put in is very, um, it's all relevant to people, right? It's stuff that's organized, categorized, um, things like text, audio. Um, there's inherent meaning in those things because people have um, put time and effort and thought into those things to organize sounds, organize you know images, all these different. You know, there's there's a plethora and a a real wealth of meaning already baked into all this data that we're giving these models and these uh, AIs. So in that sense, you know, the system is being refreshed with new information um, constantly, and people are trying to find better ways to make that more efficient or to um, kind of extract some of the meaning from the data being put in. Because <laughs> I think one of the roadblocks people have found is that uh, not just any data is good data. And so you really have to kind of either curate what you're putting in or um, or or just find things that are that are very in line with what you're trying to get as an output. And so in a lot of ways I think what we're putting in is stuff that's, you know, we get amazing results because what we're putting in is actually pretty good for the most part. Um, a lot of the <laughs> kind of almost some of the some of the work has been front loaded, I guess, in a sense. And so you, you know, it's like 
all the meaning has already been instilled, all the all the hard work of trying to figure out what makes a good painting, you know, through thousands of years of human history or whatever. It's like, you know, that's all been done already on the front end. And so we're kind of just almost taking the tail end of that and, you know, everything that's been achieved. And, you know, there's all this evolution of work that's been done beforehand. And we're just kind of reformatting and, and pulling out kind of the common threads of all of that. So, but, you know, you can't discount the work that came before and the information that's kind of been built up over time. Um, I think there's a tendency to see each moment in history as kind of a standalone or maybe that, you know, one scientific revolution or something kind of invalidates previous science or something like that. It's like we understood this way and now we understand the right way or (laughs) a better way or something, you know, and at that point, there, you know, in that in that view, it's like each kind of age stands on its own, or each period of time kind of stands on its own, and doesn't account for, you know, the very complex patterns built up over time that have a lot of information baked baked into them. So, so I think this all boils down to how these models are kind of avoiding entropy, and you know, giving us fresh results, giving us things that are, you know, novel and useful and, and, um, still like relevant to us. Um, there is, I think some gaps in this where it's going to get weird. Um, like I've already seen just limitations in my own work with AI and stuff and just doing a lot of image generation. Um, so basically for me, what I've noticed is there's a, a process basically called images to image where you take, um, you know, whatever image you want, you put it in and you put some text along with it, describing, you know, certain things that you want in the image and you just hit generate and it's going to take basically, um, whatever weight that you want to give your original image it's going to take whatever weight you want to give your text and kind of combine those. And you'll get, you know, something that's an amalgamation of all those different inputs um kind of some of the things i've come across when you so so you take you know that original image which is usually like um you know a photograph or some sort of real life example or like a really well done painting that you've done and you're trying to like enhance it and and really make it into you know something better um and what's the fascinating part and kind of interesting is that for the first couple of generations it actually works pretty well You know, it's like you can, if you're just basing it off, you know, your initial text input and your initial um, photo input or whatever, um, image input, then the results are actually pretty good. It it takes what you have, cleans up some lines, adds more detail or some more texture or whatever. And it's interesting because it's not necessarily, it adds more detail, but it doesn't add more information per se. So you're not going to get a lot of extra, you know, you might get some extra patterns thrown in, but they're kind of random and they're not super, you know, there's not a lot of, there's no intention behind it. Essentially, it's just throwing in a few more patterns and some noise. Um, But then what you do, so if you start to go down that rabbit hole and then you take, you know, you've generated maybe four just different images based off of your inputs. And, you know, out comes four different variations of the thing you wanted. Um, If you start taking those variations and you put them back in (laughs) as your new image prompt, basically, um, things just start getting really weird really fast. And so you can keep doing that and kind of uh, iterating on each variation of the images. But at each stage, it's just basically, you know, the way these image models work a lot of times is they'll you know, deconstruct an image, make it noisy or, you know, chaotic, and then pull patterns back out of it. Um, And they'll keep some of the original pattern often um, when you're using image to image. But as the patterns get more distorted, uh, they start pulling back off these distorted images. And so you start getting this, you know, train of you can almost think of it like an evolution muta- or evolutionary mutation or something where they start getting all these mutations 
building up until they're you know they're like the chihuahua of <laughs> of uh, AI image generation. But uh, yeah, so you get these like weird you know you might get something that looks vaguely if you put a person in you might get something that's looking vaguely you know like a person but then all of a sudden you know their arms are bending the wrong way and their heads are backwards and uh, just re- real weird stuff or you know architecture that doesn't make sense colors that don't match um it just it truly starts devolving into randomness faster than than uh, you would expect and so you know that's kind of when i think entropy that's basically what i'm thinking of you know things just kind of devolving back to the noise state of um chaotic potential where nothing is really organized in any meaningful way and so you have to almost if you want to kind of restore that you have to you know put back in an image of something you know like a photo or something that's you know well done like a good painting again or you know some some something that kind of like informs this noise pattern back to something that's you know intelligible to humans at that point so um so yeah that's kind of you know what i've seen as far as almost entropy in action and i don't know if it's you know i think people would probably argue that just the model's not good enough or that um you know you can yeah that you could basically make a model that can better capture like meaning i guess or information and kind of preserve that between layers and i think to some extent you can i think a lot of times though you're just actually delaying the inevitable in some sense it's like you might be able to preserve the patterns that it's feeding from for a longer amount of time and that might stave off some of the entropy um but I do think that ultimately going through enough iterations of this, it kind of will devolve back into noise in some sense. And so I think one way people are going to get around this is by just consistently trying to add more data to the system to kind of stay ahead of the curve in some sense and make sure that you know you can almost brute force pattern into the systems by you know organizing your data well before you put it in or before you train on it you can um you know get higher quality stuff you can kind of change the way or the amount of meaning and uh pattern that you get from data as well like so you can you know enhance the models that way i think and so, yeah, I think those will be the ways that people try to really get the most bang for their buck, I guess, when, when moving forward with this artificial intelligence thing. But there's, I don't know, there's just some intuition or something that strikes me that basically people will not be able to, it'll be a problem that's not very easily solved and we'll have to, you know, come to a better understanding of metaphysics or philosophy or something to either um kind of find a new way or to at least understand the limitations and build up a healthy system around that one of the kind of potential solutions i think people are looking towards or you know want to mimic is just kind of how humans learn in the world and so trying to take you know our patterns of learning and apply them to ai and so it's you know, there's a certain kind of magic about how people work and how they um, integrate themselves with the world, how they learn, how they kind of uh, take that, take what they've learned and amplify it. And so, you know, there's that, whatever that X factor is, I think people want to, you know, model these, these AIs on that. And it doesn't seem like we've figured out what that is yet. Or, I mean, obviously people have their own philosophies, religions, whatever, you know, kind of going over that. But um, from a scientific perspective, I think it's it's pretty hard to say that it's all figured out. <laughs> um, one thing that does is kind of interesting is, you know, uh, adversarial training. And so having artificial intelligences that kind of um, try to train each other up by providing competition towards a goal. And so you might say that that's 
you know, a way to, to kind of build inherent patterns of success into models, um, you know, independent of information or something like that. But even, even that comes down to something where, you know, the goals that are set for these models are completely external, um, set by people, you know, so even in that sense, you're adding, um, information from the outside back into the model to try to, you know, get it to, you know, to push it in, in directions that you want it. And so by, by setting goals and by setting, you know, these bigger parameters for these models, then you're, <laughs> you're infusing your own meaning back into them. And so, you know, they can try to get closer to the patterns, but it doesn't really get any closer to general artificial intelligence at that point where, um, you know, their people are, you know, envisioning machines kind of making their own goals and their own, you know, having their own motives in the world essentially. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's hard for me to envision a world where even artificial intelligence gets too, I guess, unlinked with <laughs> how humans operate and how people, you know, um, yeah, I think they'll, I think they'll be much more tied and maybe not even symbiotic, but just, um, dependent on each other than, than people think, um, you know, cause again, going back to this, <laughs> you know, the, the main fear is always that people are going to be transcended or that, you know, AI is going to leave people in the dust and then there won't, you know, it's like they're almost seen as two different species or something where at a certain point, yeah, AI is just going to either want to enslave humanity or, you know, do its own thing or just forget humans exist or whatever. But, um, I think the way those, the, the technology combines with people, at least for me, makes me think that long into the future, uh, these will be very, very integrated, um, like both concepts and people. So they'll, they'll go hand in hand in a lot of ways. And if anybody is, I actually would love to hear kind of alternative theories or ideas or, um, anything people have, it's, it's fascinating to me and I, it's hard to find people to talk about with this kind of stuff. Um, it's just this, you know, this is more of like the esoteric side of things and, um, I think a lot of people like the engineering side of things or the you know, implementation or even just more of the, I don't want to say like fear mongering, but you know, it's like this, the, the very shocking headlines are what gets the attention and what people like to discuss. So, but if anyone wants to talk more like esoterically or kind of philosophically about some of these underlying principles and kind of how that affects uh, even just research and development, um, I'd be very curious to hear any thoughts. So then if we take into account, you know, the factor of entropy and kind of needing more, needing to constantly kind of feed a model in some sense, information, um, I don't even think that's ultimately a bad thing. I do think that, you know, you kind of get to the point where if, if you can recognize that and see that's how, you know, these models are, are serving us best and, you know, doing the, and giving us the best outputs. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You just kind of have to take it for what it is. And, you know, it's like you can then build up systems around that, that, you know, find ways to kind of refresh, refresh your models with good data. You know, you become much more conscious with what you're putting in and it's not so much of a, you know, AI, AI doesn't become this black box that's, you know, you're taking whatever random outputs that are coming out as gospel, you know, it's like it becomes much more of a, a known tool that you can then just use to your benefit rather than trying to, um, yeah, yeah, it takes some of the magic away for sure, which I don't know, it's hard. I think people like the magic of it sometimes where it's, you know, you can just say anything and it'll make an image. It's like, yeah, but if you really dive into it, you're not, like once you start to actually try to make art with AI, it's actually kind of frustrating and not really as magical 
as you would think. Um, but yeah, so I think, you know, ultimately if you take, you know, you need a, you need a clear view of the system first that you're working with and the technology first before you can really, I think, push it to its limits and not, you know, um, not fall into the trap of being like controlled by it, I guess it's probably a better way of saying that, but, but ultimately you get to kind of tweak it and, um, yeah, again, push it to its limits and really find out what it can do when you know the inner workings and you can then use that to combine with knowing your goals and knowing, you know, kind of what you want to do. I think you can really kind of have a powerful tool on your hands that can really achieve a lot of those things. So, um, yeah, I think so just to leave it off, um, I think the the point I'm trying to make is, you know, the closer you have these models to a primary source of information, um, the more clear and concise the information you get out will be, and the results will kind of mirror uh, real life patterns and things that are like just useful to to people. And the farther you get away from these primary sources, where you know the models are kind of regurgitating their own information or, you know, looping back on their own training data or, or whatnot, I think you'll start to get really diminishing returns and even, um, kind of warped versions of what we've put in. And you can actually kind of see that with the, a lot of the chat stuff, um, uh, currently where, you know, people will kind of double down on certain topics or whatever. And, essentially just like break the AI by just doubling down on nonsense or these different things. And it gets to a point where it starts just saying all these, you know, fragments of just fragments of data that are like only slightly coherent and barely even that. <laughs> so yeah, the models are good, but they're, they're not uh, the end all be all. I don't think so. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to episode four. Uh, We'll call this AI and entropy. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.